Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. We're gonna do an old school Wheezy watch and talk, ch ch chat, chat and watch for the Modern Warfare 3 beta. I wanted to talk to you about my thoughts here, so I'm just gonna put on the basically one overall kind of good game. <laughs> Just kind of end to end. Uh, we'll watch it and talk about the good and the bad from the Modern Warfare 3 beta. Um, but first, overall, what did I think of the Modern Warfare 3 beta? I really enjoyed it. I actually really felt like it showed a lot of promise. And you're like, wait, 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 Wheezy, what the fuck? I saw the other video that you posted. You screamed for like 10 minutes at the game and you literally said, Fucking Christ! This is the worst game I've ever played! Yeah, okay, yeah, I know. So, <laughs> here's the thing about that. We'll talk about it in the bad section with uh, some of the time to kill and weapon balance things. But overall, I actually really enjoyed where the Modern Warfare 3 beta is at. And we'll talk about some of the primary concerns where I think that there's an opportunity to fix things. Won't necessarily get fixed. But even as it is now, already was more enjoyable than Modern Warfare 2. So first, let's talk about the things that I liked. The gunplay in this game feels amazing. It feels a lot like Modern Warfare 2019 did in that the guns feel significant. They feel loud, they have good sounds, they, they're not... Their recoil is significant without being burdensome, without feeling like you don't even have control of the weapon. Overall, the gunplay just feels fantastic. I immediately enjoyed that. Um, also, the movement in the game is fast and responsive, which honestly I was originally worried might take the Modern Warfare 2's jump shotting meta and make it way worse, because it's like, oh great, you can jump shot, but now you can move way faster too. Turns out that's not the case. I will talk about what I think the new movement meta is going to be. Um, but let's just say overall, the movement in the game just felt really good. It felt fast, it felt smooth, and I didn't feel like I lost fights because of the way the enemy was moving versus the way I was moving, um, which is a big deal. Um, we'll talk about why I felt like I lost most of my gunfights and why I did scream at the game a bunch. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about these Modern Warfare 2, original Modern Warfare 2 maps. I actually think that they are great. So they stay true to the original maps in that every time I jumped onto one of these for the first time, I immediately recognized it and knew my way around it, just because it's a very true to the original remake, but obviously with the glow up of the new engine, the new graphics. So even with like maps like Favela that I'm not a fan of, it just overall felt great. I always, I have said for a while now that I really wanted a Modern Warfare 2 remake because the maps in Modern Warfare 2 are some all-time classics, the original Modern Warfare 2. But they were wrapped in an absolutely broken, fucked up game, right? There were all the broken perks and one-man army noob tubes and glitches and just all of that crazy Modern Warfare 2 shit. Ruined what otherwise could have been a really great game all around. And I've wanted them to basically take modern movement and modern gameplay and put it into realizing the potential of that original Modern Warfare 2. I feel like this game really has the ability to do that. And so I'm excited to see all of those Modern Warfare 2 map remakes in this engine. I'm just, I really am excited for it. Uh, the perk system, I actually think is very interesting and novel, but without being obviously broken um, yet. And without being inconsistent and frustrating like the time box perks were in Modern Warfare 2. The way that they've got it balanced with equipment where certain vests mean you get like extra ammo or an extra primary weapon, but you don't get to use like dead silence boots or... This vest allows you to use an extra tactical, but you don't get a lethal. It gives them a lot of options beyond just this is perk one, this is perk two, this is perk three for balancing. So as they're going through the life cycle of the game and one vest is less powerful than another, then they can say, okay, well maybe this vest needs a buff and so we'll allow it to have boots or an extra lethal. There's a lot of really cool stuff they can do with perk balance and with loadouts. And I even found myself I, I still tended towards, you know, perk setups that fit my playstyle the best. So I had about two primary setups that I used on most of my classes, which is one more setup than I usually use in most Call of Duties when I'm setting up a kit. kit. I usually like a certain playstyle, a certain set of perks that are just the most effective for me, and I tend to go to them over and over again. In this, 
I found that the vest that gave you two primary weapons was actually very useful, especially with the gloves that gave you faster weapon swap. I've never really enjoyed overkill in Call of Duty games other than a novelty to just mess around with, but it felt in the beta really effective. It comes back also to the shitty weapon balance, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, all in all, I thought the equipment system, the perk system, was really well done. The new ACS field upgrade is awesome. It's probably my favorite new thing in the game, just like in Modern Warfare 2, the drill charges. Uh, were my favorite thing. I think the ACS is definitely going to be my favorite new new thing in this game. It is a field upgrade that you can use to capture points, capture flags, capture hard points. Basically, it is a PTFO uh, field upgrade. And I think that's so great. It's not, like, unbalanced or overpowered. It essentially lasts as long as it takes to capture a flag in domination. So you can place it down and it will cap that flag, assuming that the enemy doesn't come in and contest that cap. Uh, and similarly for like hard point, it'll give you 10 or 15 seconds, whatever it is, for the capture before it expires and explodes. It's relatively easy to destroy with grenades or just by shooting it. So it's not like overpowered, but it's a great way to place down something on the objective, capture the point. I think you'll see it in the gameplay right here. Boom, gonna, it's gonna capture the C flag. If there wasn't a teammate there, that would have been enough to just capture the C flag. And now I'm over here, protecting a different angle, while C's being capped. It is so cool. I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for it in the game. The little grenade drone is is probably a close second for a new favorite edition. I thought it would be annoying or irritating or overpowered or something, but it's not. It's just very useful um, and not at all overpowered. It's fun to use, but the ACS is awesome. Um, and yeah, so let's talk about what I really got and where the big kind of caveat is in Modern Warfare 3 right now. I got that longer time to kill I was begging for, which is good. Already the game feels better than Modern Warfare 2 did. But they have completely fucked the weapon balance in that there is no weapon balance currently in Modern Warfare 3. And let me explain what I mean. There are two good games, or two good games, two good guns. There were two good guns in the Modern Warfare 3 beta. The Striker was the best gun, hands down. It is an SMG with essentially unlimited range and no recoil that can four-shot anyone at any range, which makes it by far the most consistent and fast time to kill weapon in the game, other than one-shot one shot kill weapons like super close range shotguns and long range snipers if you hit like upper chest or head. Like, so that's what I mean, more consistent. If you want a one-hit kill weapon, you gotta be a little bit more deliberate about how you use it. The striker was incredible at every range. And that's why, if you look at the kill feed, you're going to see 90% of people using two things, the MCW and the Striker. And honestly, most of the time, it's going to be the Striker. Um, the MCW, again, also has... It was about a five, a consistent five hit, basically, with a fast fire rate, very low recoil. So it made it very consistent. Not quite as good as the Striker, but better by far than every other assault rifle in the game. Which was, which felt like they were six or seven hits if you were lucky. And at longer range, you saw that in my other video, if you watched it, about me complaining. I would sometimes get seven, eight hits with those assault rifles and not get a kill. And then I would get four shot by an SMG, by the striker at long range. They can fix this? I'm not entirely certain or confident they will. If they don't, then the fastest time to kill weapons like the striker will just become such a strong meta that it'll make the game not very fun, especially when it's combined with EOMM, which again, I'll still need to probably do another video on, because right now, this is still using the same matchmaking system as Modern Warfare 2, it looks like, meaning it's it's EOMM, it's feeding you wins and losses by pairing you with people that can beat the shit out of you for three games and then let you have an easy one for one game. But yeah, it will be a hard meta if they don't fix weapon balance. And right now, the weapon balance is by far the biggest problem in Modern Warfare 3. Um, the movement meta, I mentioned earlier, jump shotting, you just saw right there, is still a thing in that people are used to it from like Modern Warfare 2, and so they're still doing it, but it's not as effective or frustrating as it was in Modern Warfare 2, mainly because you don't get insta-melted by people like you did in Modern Warfare 2. The longer time to kill helps mitigate that. But what will, I believe, become the new movement meta for multiplayer, at least, is drop shot. Drop shotting is surprisingly effective, not in a way that's really, that has pissed me off just yet. Um, 
I think as it becomes more common and we get back to the old Call of Duty days of everyone drop shotting, it might get a lot more irritating. But mark my words right now, the new meta in Modern Warfare 3 isn't going to be jump shotting, it's going to be drop shotting, which I will take every day of the week. I will, I will prefer drop shotting over jump shotting. As long as these morons stop leaping around every corner, I'm going to be a lot happier. There were some other minor things I was going to talk about during this, but I don't want to drag it beyond this gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my thoughts. I am so far excited for Modern Warfare 3. We will see how it actually goes with balance fixes at launch. They need to fix the spawns too. Bonus criticism. Let me know what you guys thought. Leave comments about what you thought of the beta. If you guys liked this video, leave me a like. If you didn't, leave me a dislike. And if you're new, subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Thank you.